Today I fucked up, overslept, left 11 global team members hanging on Zoom. This morning, I wake up late, about 8.30 am. I casually roll over and pick up my iPad in bed, and there are about 11 emails and texts saying where are you? I freak out and jump up. I quickly look at my calendar, and there's nothing scheduled. So, I desperately try to figure out what happened. It turns out that 11 colleagues in Singapore, Washington DC, Paris and Rome, had scheduled today's Zoom call at 8 a.m. New York time. They had initially offered to have this call on Friday, which is when I thought the meeting was. However, I had told them that was inconvenient for me, so they scheduled it for today, solely to accommodate me. I simply forgot to update my calendar. Too long didn't read, nearly a dozen colleagues across the globe waited for me for half an hour, while I slept. I should have also mentioned that this meeting was all about some team members meeting me for the first time. Do! Exclamation mark. First impression well done. F. Oh, man. Feel you. The company I work for works closely with another company in Manila. I had flown out there a few times, and a new guy was going to join me for this trip. Since the company in Manila provides customer support, and my company has most of its customers in North America and Europe, it's a night shift starting at 9 p.m. I land in Manila at 7 a.m., with the plan to sleep the day away and be fresh and ready for a night shift. Turns out I can't sleep all day. Finally get to sleep around 5 p.m. I wake up feeling too rested. Oh no. It's midnight, and I've totally abandoned this new guy in the middle of a city he's never been to. Turns out he's pretty sharp and managed to get let in and started on his own. Phew. What did you tell them? Exclamation mark. I told them the truth and apologized profusely, that I had somehow not updated my calendar. The trick is to worry so much about what your next day is going to look like that you don't sleep at all. I used to be like that. I think working from home for the last 10 months has softened my brain, as each day melts into each other. Today I fucked up by finding my stolen truck and losing it again. My truck was stolen two weeks ago. I thought I'd never see it again, but it happened. I was visiting my tenant at a condo complex, which is not the best part of town. Just as I was about to pull out of my parking spot, two guys drove up in my truck. Even though they had removed my rack, changed the wheels and the license plate, I knew it was my truck. I watched them as they parked just a few spots away from me. The passenger got out, most likely to buy drugs, and the driver was sitting in the car. I called the police while waiting in my car. I was giving them information when the other guy came back to the truck. When they started the truck, my phone connected to their Bluetooth and they could now hear the 911 dispatcher on their stereo. When I lost audio, I looked at my phone and realized what had happened. I turned off my Bluetooth and continued to speak to the dispatcher. But it was too late and they had figured out someone had called the cops on them. They took off in a hurry. I followed them but they were driving carelessly, running stops and red lights. I didn't want to endanger anyone else so I stopped chasing them. Police never caught them. Too long didn't read, I found my stolen trucks with the thieves inside. I called the cops on them but they got away when my phone connected to their Bluetooth. When you least expect it, Bluetooth fucks you in the ass and the least expected time. That's why I absolutely hate Bluetooth. The only reason, right now I hate Bluetooth. Well, at least we know for sure it was your car. Yay, indeed. That sucks, really, really. Thanks. I know there's a lot I could have done to prevent the theft from happening in the first place. Like steering wheel locks, trackers, alarms, etc. But fortunately I had insurance so I'll get some of it back. It's just crazy to think about people having balls to steal a car and drive it around for weeks in the same town. I thought they just tore those apart immediately. I'm just glad that no one was hurt, especially me. Holy cow that was crazy. Had a very similar incident happen to me a while back. We had an inflatable rib, a boat, kept in our boathouse, that some people broke into and stole. Thought we'd never see it again, but funnily enough, 
It turned up on eBay about a week later, a good 100 miles away. We spotted it, told the police, and they said they would take care of it, because they had a dedicated team for this. Fast forward to a week later, with the auction about to end, and we get a panicked call from them, asking us to buy it, as they hadn't got the paperwork in place. So we buy back our boat, from the people who stole it. Funnily enough, when the seller saw the person who bought it lived at the same address they stole it from, we got a message from the seller telling us that someone had stolen it from them. What happened afterwards? Dude, where's your truck? Dude, where's my truck? Today I fucked up by teaching my daughter compassion. We all want our kids to be nice people and not dicks. Well it's not possible for my daughter to be a dick at the moment for anatomical reasons. Getting of topic. I try to show my daughter positive shows which talk about being good, doing good and helping others. Recently she watched a song video about an orphan boy being told not to cry and how his friends would give him love as they give him a tissue and hugs. Normally my daughter being a two year old would learn some lyrics and prevent from me sleeping as she makes me repeat after her for a few hours. However that tissue in the video hit home. She was grabbing cloths and going around the house dabbing eyes and telling us not to cry. Just overall cuteness. After a few days it became a common theme around the house she walks up tells you not to cry and dabs your eyes with a cloth. Until your eyes begin to burn, fire, 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 fire. She found the glass cleaner applied it generously on a glasses cloth and rubbed deeply into my eyes. Why I'm typing and making it worse I'm not sure. TL, doctor, daughter learned compassion from YouTube and performed chemical warfare on my eyes. Hopefully you are able to flush your eyes enough to feel somewhat better. On the plus side, you now have a story you can use to embarrass her for the rest of her life. And we mostly pretend to crush everyone in the village. Sometimes the doctor comes after to help people. They sure learn a lot when they go off to daycare. Oh god. I laughed too loud and scared the cat. God. Toddlers are sociopaths. She used torture our kit and keep grabbing him too hard and trying to force feed him. I can't tell you not to cry if you're not crying now comply. Truth. Cat tax please! Exclamation mark.